In this video, I'd like to briefly discuss some of the characteristics of the different types of galaxies. In uh, future videos that I'll post, I'll go to each type individually. But let's go ahead and uh, start considering the, the types. In the early 1920s, uh, good photographs became available of what used to be thought nebula, but uh, came to be known as galaxies. Uh, the 1920s, Hubble came up with a classification scheme uh, not really designed to promote the idea of uh, a galaxy changing from one type to another, say elliptical into spiral or spiral into elliptical, but just kind of categorizing them. Some uh, basic features here, the ellipticals have a smooth light distribution with uh, no discernible features. The spirals have spiral arms, and there are two types of spirals. Uh, the type of spiral that has a bar of material going through the nucleus, and then the regular spirals with no bar. There's a subclassification scheme, A, B, C. If the spiral arms are very extended and the nucleus is therefore small compared to the spiral arms, it's a C designation. The A is the designation for the spirals where the nucleus, the central portion, is very significant and the spiral arms are close in to the nucleus, not spread out. So there's a, there's a beginning, the classification scheme. Uh, Spitzer in 2006, this infrared telescope uh, recorded photographs of uh, uh, various types of telescopes, the regular spirals, sort of an intermediate grouping between regular and barred, barred spirals, the irregulars, and over here, ellipticals. And it is useful to have this infrared light, as we'll see shortly. Um, by looking at very distant galaxies, we can investigate what the shapes of galaxies were in the past when the universe was very young. And the only real thing I'd like to point out here especially is that we do see regular spirals, we see barred spirals. I shouldn't say we, I say the uh, astronomers who study this uh, detect regular spirals, barred spirals, and ellipticals. So these uh, these types have been in the universe for a long time. The young galaxies, these very uh, uh, distant past galaxies, these images, do show the galaxies there tend to be smaller and not quite as well developed as what we uh, see today. Uh, this is uh, illustrated again in this, uh, in this graphic. On the bottom frame it would be the early universe and the galaxies are not settled in to their, their shapes as well as what they are today. So, this big spiral galaxy, Andromeda, the galaxy that's visible with your naked eye. If you know where to look in the Andromeda constellation, that's uh, to the east of the great square, uh, east of the constellation of Pegasus. And uh, you can see this without using binoculars or a telescope. If you're in a reasonably dark uh, region, even if you're in a small city, you should be able to uh, find this, uh, this galaxy. But with photography, of course, more details are pulled out. It is a spiral galaxy. We can see dust. We can see spiral arms. More on that later. Uh, the Whirlpool Galaxy, M51. And on some of these slides, I have some facts about these galaxies um, and references where you could double check the facts. But uh, So about 30 million light years from us and about half the size of the Milky Way galaxy. There is an interaction going on here. This is a separate galaxy that gravitationally is affecting the spiral arms of uh, M51. Another view of M51 on the right frame here in infrared light instead of the visible light. And the infrared really helps pull out the location of the dust. The spiral arms in spiral galaxies are regions where the gas and dust is denser, more concentrated, and it's the region uh, of star formation on the leading edge of the spiral arms. Um, the hot, bright, young stars are formed, and those really trace out the location of the spiral arms. In addition to these red areas here, 
those are H2 regions where young hot stars are ionizing hydrogen and the uh, recombination, we get red light coming from uh, those H2 regions. Another spiral galaxy, again uh, spiral arms there, and we have an infrared view again locating the dust that's uh, in this spiral galaxy. If the galaxy is not uh, oriented favorably, then it's sometimes more difficult to determine that it is a spiral. Um, here we're looking at a spiral galaxy that's edge on, and how can I know it's a spiral? Well, we can study the rotation of this object. The spiral galaxies do show an organized rotation, and this much dust, the black uh, going across here, obscuring the more distant light, this much dust is only found in the spiral galaxies. This one's, uh, we're not looking at the face of the galaxy, the flat disk, but instead we're looking more at an oblique view of the galaxy. So the spiral galaxies have spiral arms. They have concentrated dust in those spiral arms, new stars being born, and it is a flat disk, more or less, with some small amount of material and kind of a halo around the disk and different size nuclei compared to the spiral arm uh, amount of matter. Edge on view here of the sombrero galaxy and that's the only view we have but the sombrero view is view galaxy is viewed edge on and recently there's been discussion that this is not just a simple spiral but it might be two galaxies um, with more of an elliptical galaxy showing here with this diffuse light. There's a lot of there's star, there's stars here that are not resolved. We can't see the separate points of light. These stars are stars in between us and the sombrero galaxy. Uh, but spiral galaxy and perhaps a compound galaxy with the elliptical type galaxy as, uh, as part of it. Then getting into the barred spiral. So regular spiral on the left a barred spiral has a rectangular shaped uh, concentration of matter through the nucleus and it might have a special effect on the spiral arms. Here's a larger uh, view of the, uh, this is a different galaxy, but about 69 million light years away, but with the uh, Hubble telescope, it's, uh, we're given a nice view of it. So the bar going across here and then strong pair of spiral arms going off from the ends of that bar. So what do we see in the spiral galaxies? Well there is a halo of what we call population two stars that are old and don't have many elements other than hydrogen or helium in those stars and the stars move in more or less random orbits around the center of the galaxy. In the disk, where most of the material is for the spiral galaxies, we have population one stars. They tend to be younger, and they tend to have more elements um, beyond helium, though not just hydrogen and helium. <coughs> We're not talking about a, a superabundance of, of elements uh, heavier than helium, but a noticeable amount more, and uh, very confident that this extra abundance of uh, heavy elements is due to supernova explosions in the disk of the galaxy. In the supernova explosion, the heavier elements are created, that material is blasted out into the interstellar medium, and then subsequently becomes a part of the next generation of stars. Um, in the disk, roughly circular orbits for the, uh, the stars as they move around the nucleus. And in the central bulge, there's, there are old stars and young stars, a mixture of population one and two. Now to the ellipticals. You should see you know, a great difference here. So the galaxy that's under discussion, M60, is this large image that's uh, in the center of the slide. It's about 50, miles, 50 million light years away. It's about the same diameter as the Milky Way, but it does have a higher mass. Um, the material is not just in a disk, there's material three-dimensionally uh, spread out over here and uh, it has more mass than the Milky Way galaxy. But uh, it should, 
should pick out the difference here between the spirals and the elliptical. Another example, I see 2006. This is, I see is a different uh, catalog of uh, of stars. I'm sorry, of galaxies. And uh, again, smooth distribution, higher concentration of stars towards the center of the elliptical galaxy, but not uh, noticeable gas and dust. There is gas and dust in the ellipticals, but uh, not concentrated, not to the place where very many new stars are being formed. There are some new stars being formed in the ellipticals, but not nearly at the rate that they're formed in the spiral galaxies. Here is a cluster of galaxies, so we're seeing more galaxies in this slide. Just a few stars where you see the kind of cross of light here. Um, but most of the uh, images on this uh, slide are galaxies. But a large galaxy here, some other smaller ellipticals where you see the smooth distribution of light. Um, we'll talk about uh, clusters of galaxies in a different video. So in the elliptical galaxies, um, older stars, low abundance of, uh, of metals, a little bit lower than in the spiral arms of uh, uh, the spiral galaxies. Um, there are some heavier elements in the ellipticals, but the, for the most part, the young stars that produce supernova are all processed through their life history and we just have the older stars left in the elliptical galaxies. Um, stars have random orientations for their orbits. They're not in a disk. They don't all orbit in the same direction, in the same orientation. And there's little star formation uh, taking place because it, we don't have concentrated gas and dust in the ellipticals. Then the last category we'll talk about in this uh, video, irregular galaxies. Uh, they, they're not spirals and they're not elliptical. They're irregular. They don't have a uh, overall pattern that we see from one irregular galaxy to the next irregular galaxy. This particular one is uh, near the Milky Way galaxy in the process of being absorbed over a long time in the future, absorbed by the Milky Way galaxy. But there is gas and dust and there are these um, ionized hydrogen regions where there are hot young stars. There is star formation going on in the irregular galaxies. And kind of a strange one here. Uh, been, it's picked up the label of the cigar galaxy from this, but with the uh, uh, better instruments that we have today for photography and uh, collecting light, um, there's also this very chaotic um, pattern of material mixed in with that uh, that white glow that you see on this, this image. So overall, what do we have? Spiral galaxies have a disk. They have uh, stars in circular orbits in that disk. There's lots of uh, concentrated gas and dust and star formation going on at a, well, let's say a high rate. Subcategories of regular spirals and barred spirals. The elliptical galaxies, a spherical to oval shape. The stars are moving at all sorts of orientations around the center. They're not organized in uh, one particular rotation motion. Uh, and we have few stars being formed. There are subcategories of the ellipticals. There are giant ellipticals, bigger than spiral galaxies, or more medium size, and then Perhaps the most abundant uh, type of galaxy in the universe are the dwarf ellipticals. Unfortunately, because they're dwarf ellipticals, they don't have much light output and can't be detected at great distances. But in our local area, they seem to be the uh, most common type of galaxies. Then the irregulars, as we've uh, discussed, no organized shape. Lots of gas and dust available to uh, create stars. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of the types of galaxies. I'll be posting some other videos that uh, focus uh, just on spirals, a focus on ellipticals, a focus on irregulars, and uh, have a little more discussion of how these galaxies formed, the different types, and uh, not totally settled um, theories, but uh, we'll give you some ideas to think about. If you enjoy these videos and you'd like to look at a list of my other videos, 
uh, two websites. These are free. There's no registration required. At each of these websites, you can uh, look at a list of the videos that are available and see the name of the video, how long it is in minutes, and a little description of the content. So hope you keep uh, your interest in astronomy up and uh, uh, Hope you enjoy these videos. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you would like to uh, uh, be closer in touch with what I'm posting.